hello friends welcome back to my channel today I would like to talk about the concept carbonyl compounds which is mainly aldehydes and ketones carbonyl compounds are compounds that contain the C double O group carbonyl group examples are aldehydes and ketones as you can see here the difference between aldehydes and ketones is C double O group is at the end of a carbon chain for aldehydes C double O group is in the carbon chain for ketones for aldehydes at least one hydrogen atom is attached to the carbonyl carbon atom for ketones two alkyl or aryl groups are attached to carbonyl carbon atom and the examples are shown over here for aldehyde methanol ethanol propanol butanol pentanol for ketone, propanone, butanone, pentan 2 on and pentan 3 on. Physical properties of carbonyl compounds. Boiling point increases from alkanes to aldehydes to ketones to alcohols. Aldehydes and ketones are having permanent dipole dipole forces. So the boiling point is more than alkanes but lesser than alcohols because alcohols show hydrogen bonding solubility of smaller carbonyl compounds completely soluble as they form hydrogen bonds with water molecules and therefore they are good solvents for polar and non-polar solutes larger carbonyl compounds polar nature decreases and non-polar nature increases ability to form hydrogen bonds therefore decreases Preparation of aldehydes and ketones. Aldehydes and ketones can be made by oxidizing primary and secondary alcohol respectively. The oxidizing agent used is either acidified potassium dichromate K2Cr2O7 or acidified potassium manganate 7 KMNO4. Preparing aldehydes. Primary alcohol plus oxygen atom from oxidizing agent gives the aldehyde and water. For example, propan 1 all on oxidation gives propanol and water. The oxidizing agent used is a solution of potassium dichromate 6 which is orange acidified with dilute sulfuric acid. To make the aldehyde, the primary alcohol is heated gently with acidified dichromate solution. The reaction mixture turns green as the orange dichromate ions are reduced to green Cr3 plus ions. Oxidation of a primary alcohol. The acidified oxidizing agent is added one drop at a time to the warm primary alcohol. The aldehyde made is distilled off as it is formed in the reaction vessel. This method works because the aldehyde product will always have a lower boiling point than the alcohol reactant. If the aldehyde is not distilled off as soon as it is formed, further heating with acidified dichromate solution will oxidize the aldehyde produced to a carboxylic acid. The apparatus used to prepare a sample of ethanol is shown in the figure. The figure says distilling off and collecting the aldehyde ethanol which is formed in the mild oxidation of a primary alcohol ethanol. The aqueous ethanol formed smells like rotting apples. How to prepare ketones? Secondary alcohol plus oxygen atom from oxidizing agent gives ketone and water. For example, propan 2 all on oxidation gives propanone. Once again, the oxidizing agent used here is a solution of potassium dichromate 6 acidified with dilute sulfuric acid. Then comes the oxidation of a secondary alcohol. To produce a ketone acidified, oxidizing agent must be heated with a secondary alcohol. The reaction mixture in the flask will change from orange to green. Unlike aldehydes, ketone formed cannot be further oxidized even if you heat the reaction mixture under reflux and add excess oxidizing agent. Therefore, we do not need to distill off the ketone product immediately. The next is the reaction of aldehydes and ketones. C O bond of the carbonyl group is highly polarized due to the oxygen atom being more electronegative. This causes the slightly positive carbon atom to be susceptible to nucleophilic attacks. Nucleophiles are something that carries a negative charge. Therefore, carbonyl compounds will undergo nucleophilic addition. 
reduction of aldehydes and ketones aldehyde plus reducing agent gives primary alcohol ketone plus reducing agent gives secondary alcohol the reducing agent used is usually an aqueous alkaline solution of sodium tetrahydroborate NaBH4 or lithium tetrahydroaluminate LiAlH4 in dry ether. The reduction reaction is carried out by either warming the aldehyde or ketone with an aqueous alkaline solution of sodium tetrahydroborate or adding lithium tetrahydroaluminate dissolved in a dry ether such as diethyl ether at room temperature the organic solvent has to be dry because lithium tetrahydroaluminate is a more powerful reducing agent than sodium tetrahydroborate and reacts vigorously in water example ethanol on reduction gives ethanol which is a primary alcohol and propanone on reduction gives propantool which is a secondary alcohol nucleophilic addition with hcn aldehydes and ketones also both undergo addition reactions with hydrogen cyanide in these reactions addition of hcn takes place across the c double o bond however the attack is by a nucleophile not an electrophile we can show this using the nucleophilic addition reaction of the aldehyde propanol when heated with hcn the HCN is generated in situ in the reaction vessel by the reaction of potassium cyanide KCN and dilute sulfuric acid. Hydrogen cyanide is not used alone because it is a poisonous gas. Instead, it is produced from the reaction between sodium or potassium cyanide and sulfuric acid. The solution will contain hydrogen cyanide and some free cyanide ions. For both aldehydes and ketones, hydroxy nitriles are produced. For aldehydes, take ethanol as an example, 2-hydroxypropane nitrile is produced. For ketones, take propanone as an example, 2-hydroxy-2-methylpropane nitrile is produced. This nitrile group can then be easily hydrolyzed to a carboxylic acid. You can also hydrolyze the nitrile group by refluxing with dilute alkali such as sodium hydroxide solution. In this reaction, a sodium salt of the carboxylic acid COONA is formed. Now comes the mechanism of nucleophilic addition. Electron deficient carbon atom is attacked by the nucleophile CN- which is a step 1. Step 2 is the negative ion formed then picks up a hydrogen ion from hydrogen cyanide or from the water. Test for aldehydes and ketones. Test for carbonyl group using 2,4-dinitrophenyl hydrazine or 2,4-DNPH. 2,4-DNPH can be used to detect the presence of carbonyl group. The structure of 2,4-DNPH is shown below. If an aldehyde or ketone is present, a deep orange precipitate is formed. A condensation reaction occurs when a carbonyl compound is added to 2,4-DNPH. During this reaction, a water molecule is lost. The final compound is seen as orange-yellow precipitate. Other classes of organic compounds that also contain the carbonyl group such as carboxylic acids and esters do not form precipitates with 2,4-DNPH. How to distinguish aldehydes and ketones? Aldehydes can be further oxidized to form carboxylic acids but ketones cannot be oxidized easily. We can use this difference to distinguish between an aldehyde and ketone in simple chemical test. The two most common tests involve mild oxidation using Tollens reagent or failing solution. Tests given only by aldehydes. The first one is Tollens reagent. The reagent used here is solution of silver nitrate and aqueous ammonia. Gives excess AgNH3 twice plus ion. Aldehyde plus Tollens reagent gives you a silver mirror. That time, Ag plus is reduced to silver and aldehyde is oxidized to acid. 2 Ag plus plus RCHO gives 2 Ag 
plus RCOOH and H+. Plus. If you take ethanol as an example, the equation is shown over here. Ethanol on reacting with Tollens reagent gives silver mirror and ethanoic acid followed by ammonia and water. The before and after observations when Tollens reagent is warmed with aldehyde such as ethanol is shown here in the figure. The next test is using failing solution which is copper sulfate in ammonia solution. Aldehyde plus failing solution give red precipitate. Cu2 plus is reduced to Cu1 oxide and aldehyde is oxidized to acid. 2 Cu2 plus plus RCHO gives 2 Cu plus plus RCOOH plus H plus. Take ethanol as an example. You will get ethanol by treating with failing solution gives a red precipitate of Cu2O and ethanoic acid. The before and after observations when failing solution is warmed with an aldehyde such as ethanol is shown over here. How to deduce the presence of a CH3CO group in an aldehyde or ketone? This is done by iodoform reaction. Triiodomethane, also called iodoform, forms a yellow precipitate with methyl ketones. Methyl ketones are compounds that have a CH3CO group. Ethanol also contains a CH3CO group and therefore also forms a yellow precipitate with iodoform. The reagent is heated with an alkaline solution of iodine. This reaction involves a halogenation and hydrolysis step. In the halogenation step, all three hydrogen atoms in the methyl group are replaced with iodine atoms forming a CI3 group. The intermediate compound is hydrolyzed by an alkaline solution to form a sodium salt RCOO minus Na plus and a yellow precipitate of CHI3. The reaction is shown over here, methyl ketone step 1, iodine and NaOH gives RCOCI3 step 2 treating with NaOH aqueous and hydrolysis gives triiodomethane as a product. The triiodomethane test can also be used to identify the presence of a secondary alcohol with the hydroxy group OH on the carbon atom next to a methyl group. This CH3CHOH group is firstly oxidized which forms a methyl ketone RCOCH3 which will form a yellow precipitate when reacted with alkaline I2. The products of the reaction are the yellow triiodomethane precipitate CHI3 and the sodium salt of a carboxylic acid RCOO minus Na plus. Uh, that's all. Thank you so much for watching this video.